first up. Okay. We finally had these in stock. I mean, these are new, not new, whatever. We, we, we had them coming soon for a while. This is the POE2 hat for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I believe it's for the Raspberry Pi 3B plus and four only. So watch out, you can't use it with older ones, um, but it plugs right in and it has this like, really cool flat inductor. It's got a, a much better heat uh, sink uh, fan thingy going on. Um, I think it's, uh, it's less bulky. It's um, probably got better performance. Uh, check out the specs. It's the same price. Um, we have some in stock, and if we're not, sign up, and we'll get another shipment. Okay. Next up. Okay. We also have an STM32H750 kit. This is from WeAct. Um, they make the uh, quote-unquote black pill STM32 F411 board that we carry, and I just really like this dev board. I'll say we didn't make this dev board. Uh, you know, we're basically stocking it as is. Um, we don't even have CircuitPython support necessarily for this chipset yet, um, but we just thought it was such a good dev board that for the people who are interested in exploring this ultra powerful STM32H7 chip, I mean, it's like 480 megahertz, it's got 480 megs of QSPY flash, it's got like a megabyte of RAM. I really like this dev board. It's simple to the point, it's got the chip, SD card, USB C. You know, bootloader, DFU button, a couple things on the bottom, some flash, camera slot. You get to really uh, experiment all, in all the breakouts. It's a, a great way to experiment with um, this new chip. And, uh, you know, I just want to clarify, it's meant for advanced users. I don't even know that there's an Arduino core for this chip. But uh, if, you're, if you're ready to rock out with um, ST's development system, uh, this board is for you. We also finally got our shipment of colorful clips. Um, these are from Leeborg, Cyborg. Um, these are, you know, they're fun, festive, tropical alligator clips. Um, they come in these cool, like lime green, I think like tangerine orange, uh, pink, my hair pink, <laughs> blink a purple, and uh, you know, like a pastel blue. Um, you know, we have alligator clips that are like the regular colors, but maybe you want something kind of cool, kind of femme, kind of, tropical so Sh shouldn't be boring don't be boring when you can have these beautiful alligator clips i love it when people take something that has classical colors and they give it a twist so these are super cool. cool um we start our stocking yeah, also if you do workshops and these are yours um you know you'll be able to identify them and be like hey those are mine. yeah nobody's going to steal your alligator clips when you got or, these or they're definitely going to steal them, or they're gonna gonna steal them next up uh next up okay we've got uh this these, these are dht 20 there's a couple different names for them but these are basically HT20 temperature and humidity sensors. We really like the HT20. These are an upgrade from the DHT22. They are true I squared C sensors. They come in three different shapes. So we've got this like four pin module shape, plugs into a breadboard. It's very inexpensive. If you open it up, dun, 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 you see inside there's an HT20. There's a thing on the top. And um, there's also a capacitor. Who cares? A good cap capacitor is always helpful. And two pull-up resistors. I love that they included the pull-up resistors. Tenth of a cent, but really handy. You can see the pin out there. It's also on the page. On the back, there's the uh, nicely engraved specifications. This is a really good low-cost temperature humidity sensor. Please, everybody, for the love of God, stop using DHT11s and DHT22s and use these instead. We have Python code. We have circuit Python code. We have an Arduino library. It works wonderfully. And you don't have to deal with like annoying timing stuff of the DHT 11 and 22. Speaking of which, you don't have to use the AM2301 either because we've got the HT20 version of uh, this as well. It's kind of like an enclosed shell version, easy to mount, got four wires. Again, what's inside? HT20, capacitor, two resistors, wires, easy to use, easy to connect, specs on the back. Please use this. There's even more. Next up, we've got the uh, durable version. You know, this is, I, I will say it's not waterproof, but it's its much more durable and protected. It's got this kind of um, mesh bubbly cover that will protect it for use outdoors. It's got a mounting you know, clip and some uh, screws and everything. And inside, what do you know? It's also an AHT20 um, I squared C temperature and humidity sensor love these things so um these three they're all part of a family you know if you just need a breadboard get the cheap breadboard one want to mount it outside want a little bit more durability get the am2315 version uh, but they all use the same code um really like this sensor strongly recommend it 
Please stop using the HD 11s and 22s. All right, next up. Okay, next up, uh, you notice that the ultimate GPS modules that we've been stocking, um, we've had to revise all of the breakouts and the shields and everything because uh, for reasons that I do not understand, the maker of the ultimate GPS module that we've used for you know a decade or so um, stopped making them. However, um, there is another company that makes an equivalent module. It's, it's the same, it's similar chipset. It's the next generation chipset. It's pin compatible. Uh, and best of all, this one also um, supports uh, GLONASS, which is the Russian GPS alternative. So you can uh, also, you know, you can use this even if you aren't getting GPS satellites, you can use the Russian satellite system to also get location data. And did I mention it's pin compatible? Did I mention all the same software works? Did I mention it's even cheaper than before? Um, it's a little bit thicker because the antenna has to be thicker to pick up. I think both uh, satellite systems, um, but we've been using this module with great success. Strongly recommend it as a replacement for the previous module. And again, it's pin compatible. You don't have to worry about it. All right, and we have we have a star of the show, but I, I kind of feel like the next round of products and then the final product is a star of the show. So we have a bunch of keycaps. We've got some fun keycaps. So yeah. um, we we kind of went on a little bit of a tear. We decided to get a bunch of custom keycaps that were inspired yeah, by that one to last. my life. Yeah, yeah so, we're, right so, so this first is, up, get. this is the Git logo. The Git logo is under Creative Commons. It's by Justin Long. Thank you for yeah. uh, making it available. Um, yeah. We just thought it's a cool logo the, and maybe you want the, to have the a The back of all of them is like this, by the yeah, way. Yeah, the, the back is the same. So these are etched glow through keycaps. So all of them, you know, they look great yeah. even without uh, a light behind them. But if you do have a backlit or underlit keyboard, they're gonna look really good yeah. because you're gonna have that glow and through so, effect. Uh, I should be clear. So these are ones that we came up with. We didn't talk to anybody about this. This is just me. This is just. These are my favorite things. And I was like, what would I want on a on like a macro pad that was like, what do I do with code? And so some of these are a little bit won't snarky. Fix. I thought would be funny. So yeah. you know, won't fix, which is a, you know a funny. If people you know do they close things with won't fix, but it's a little bit yeah. of a joke with us. Um, in, internally where we have a bug that's so difficult, we're like struggling with it and we're all like, ah, you know, what if we, what if we just close it as won't fix and just ignore it? Yeah. Uh, we, we don't usually do that, but maybe it is a feature, not a bug. Yeah. In which case, and this one's always funny because it's hate fork. It's hate fork. And it's what people do during a project. I think spite driven development <laughs> is a powerful motivator. Um, and it's true. Yeah. There are a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of history of computer science that is hate forked. Um, a lot of Linux is hate forked. A lot of operating systems and tools are hate forked. A lot of you know, web development, there's a lot of hate forking. Yeah. I, I mean, hate is a little bit facetious. I, you know, there's no hate here, but there's a little bit of the like, you see some code, it, you think you can do it better. I, I think it's funny just button. to have it on your little keyboard because you're like, you know what? I can hit that button at any time. Yeah. So then next up. Next up, uh, pull request. Uh, you, you know, like I'm trying to intermix the little, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of sweetness. Yeah. Um, we love pull requests. We make them all the time. It's a great way to contribute. And I think it's one of the most powerful things that we've added to programming. You know, for a long time we've had open source, but I think the pull request is sort of the next generation. It's how do people contribute back? And we finally made it as easy as pressing a button. And also, here's a button. All right, and then the last one before the last one is this is uh, looks, this, looks good to me. This one is I'll tell you this one is is uh, for Tan Newt Scott, our, our developer, who um, you know sort of well trained us well into doing pull uh, you know pull request reviews. We didn't used to do them, and uh, Scott was like, we should really do them, and I was like, ah, you're right. And so we started doing them, and it's actually really improved our development process. Um, and one of the things that uh, I saw, you know, Scott was doing a lot of reviews early on, um, and uh, Scott would would put LGTM um, exclamation point or or you know period at, at, in the reviews, and I was like, what is that? And it was, it's like I guess like a little bit of a Googleism uh, looks good to me. It's a it's a short way of doing an approval yeah. of a pull request. So I thought all these things together, I think this is this is kind of like the history of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had another one, but it just won't fit. And I don't know if we're going to do the acronym. It's like works on my machine. Um, yeah, I thought I think looks good to me. Hey, fork, it won't fix. Kind of yeah. kind of cover that. All philosophy. right, and then last up, this is one, this one's a little different. This is official. Official. We worked with GitHub and got permission to make this. Thank you, GitHub. Thank you, GitHub. Thank you, Martin, in particular. And we were able to make this an official thing. We could sell it. We have a license to do this. GitHub is super cool about this. I love how they approved it. We sent them a, a photo mock-up 
And yeah. I think on their internal you know, yeah, Slack or whatever, they're, they're, they're like, like, this is so cool. They're like, this is so cool, approved. Yeah. And I was like, I love it when you don't have to go through um, yeah. legal. Right, well, so no, we still had, I still had to do a legal. No, no, but they, you know, they, yeah. they were just like, it's this is great. So let me plug oh, this. This is what they look like off. So I'm turning this aside. Sorry, way. yeah. That's flip, what you want, right? Flippy. Well, we want to. the wrong way? I think we want to flip. Flip. Oh, sorry. I will. How did it get reversed? I don't know. Okay, well, whatever. I'll just turn it upside down. This is the, uh, you know, this is the overhead that isn't even, it wasn't even supposed to be survived. Uh, shouldn't have survived till now. This is the one okay. that died last Well, year. this is fine because this is now, uh, you know, landscape. So let me autofocus. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. You know what? It's cool. It doesn't matter. Weird. Who cares? Um, so you see I have some non, uh, you know, some just generic keycaps. These are pudding keycaps. Um, and then at the top, you can see the demo showing. It's just swirling through the colors. And then I think if I press it, it gets a little bit brighter, which... It just makes it just as dim. Uh, you got the won't fix, got the looks good to me, got the uh, hate fork. Oh, when I press it, it turns white, so you can really yeah. see the color. Uh, pull request, uh, Octocat, and Git. So uh, yeah. I, I just think, you know, if you're going to have a mechanical keyboard, why not just have a little bit of a, a ridiculous uh, key switch on there? So I really I think love the camera's these. actually even backwards right now. Is it? Well. Yeah, who knows, man? Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, pound won't fix. Won't fix, sorry. Yeah, so this, uh, is, this is the overhead that um, died last week, and uh, I thought it was back to normal, but apparently yeah. it's not. That's cool. So uh, like, I don't want to mess with it. Yeah, I mean, let me try to... Okay. <laughs> yeah. There you I go. Mean, like, let me see if this is... Works cool. on my machine. <laughs> Yeah. You know what it looks like. Anyway, so we have these uh, in stock. We got a bunch of them, and uh, okay. we'll be making more because we, we think it's All fun right. to have custom. And this is the official one. And I don't know how long we're going to be allowed to do this. So when they're back in stock, because we got through the first batch really fast, um, probably should pick up one. Yeah. Nothing lasts forever. Okay. Start the show beside you, Lady Ada, our <laughs> last team, but not least. our employees, everyone in Discord. It's a keycap. No, it's a round rectangle Community. display. Uh, people know Adafruit. We love to have custom displays, uh, breakouts and such. And it's been a tough year for displays. It's, um, they're, they've gone very expensive. But we did want to uh, bring this one out. This is a 1.7 inch diagonal 240 by uh, 280 display. And it's got a cool thing going on with it. It's grounded rectangle. Um, so this is, you know, if you have like a watch, like a smart watch or whatever, you'll notice that they have, you know, rounded rectangle screens. And so these are, you know, designed for use in those cases. But I thought maybe people would have uh, some other use. Okay, I have to remember this is. Yeah. No, sorry, this is. <laughs> this is okay. No, I got yeah. it. Um, it. It works. It works. So let me. This is freaking out. Um, so this display, I'll say so. You can see how it cuts off um, on the corner. So this display, I guess people are like, oh, do you have to do some special memory mapping? No, it it looks to memory in the memory the way you write to the screen. It looks like a square display. It's just literally those corner it just you know corner pixels they just don't show up um so this is a um you know you could use it for a smartwatch if you want but it also just has a kind of a funky look to it um you just use it like any other st7789 display nothing special about that there um 240 by 280 pixels it's an ips display so it looks good even if you're angled like this um I think, you know, people are like making their own DIY smartwatches. This could be a good use for that. But it's got also got very high PPI, so any, any sort of small wearable um, or project. And I think one of the things that's, uh, we're trying out that's new with um, this TFT is, you know, a lot of people really liked our STEM QT board system, where, um, which is based off of SparkFun's Quick. Uh, it's, it's the same compatibility, same pinout, where you can use any... Um, Anything with I squared C would have the same connector, so you could easily plug and play and chain them together. And we thought, um, well, what if we did the same thing for SPI? Because a lot of people have displays, especially if you're making a smartwatch, you may not want to solder it in, you might want to have a flex display. So we actually saw that DF Robot had um, a pinout that they were using on some of their displays, and I thought, this is really cool. We made it ours compatible, it's three or five volt logic, um, and we tried putting it on this display, so, Going forward, we'll probably have dev boards that have this flip top flex connector that our TFTs will be able to plug into so you can just attach a display as easily as you would a uh, STEM QT. So this is the first one. So hopefully by the time this video is a year old, we'll have a bunch of products with this connector on them. And let's do products.